Hey everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to today's video. Today we're going to talk about something a little more serious. This is going to be an interview that was just released with the British GQ with John Boyega. There's going to be profanity in this video. There are going to be uh, racial themes in this video. So if you're sensitive to all of that, turn away. But for those of you who want to dive into it and really understand what this brilliant man went through, um, keep watching or go to the link down below, which has this full interview so you can read it for yourself. I'm not going to cover the whole thing. Uh, I'm just going to focus on the parts where he discusses Star Wars because, well, that's what this channel is all about. So in this video, we're going to go over a few different things. Now, if you didn't know, um, John Boyega's character as Finn was complete bullshit. That's not a subjective comment. It is objective. It is the way it is. We all know it. And even he knows it. And that is the theme of this article, this video, and the issues he is coming out with and raising awareness of. Now, there were a lot of things that he had to deal with, whether it was from the fans racially or even from apparently what we can see here was Disney racially and what they did with this character. Now, there's a lot of interesting stuff with his life. I implore you to go read this article once again. Now, let's jump to what pertains to this video, which is the Star Wars stuff, and him getting cast in The Force Awakens. Well, now enough is enough. Almost after a decade in the business, after the life-changing, overwhelming, and at times stifling reality of operating within the sprawling Death Star of franchise filmmaking, he is just about done abiding by any old rules. As a certain Nigerian boat captain can grimly attest, which, if you read the full article, he almost died because someone tried to scam him for money. John Boyega is not really the man you think he is, and now he is finally ready to let the world know. For Boyega, 2017 was a year thick with opportunity. If capturing the role of Finn in 2015 Star Wars The Force Awakens represented the professional equivalent of an enormous poker win, then this was the period when he effectively staggered to the cashier window with an armful of chips. Having already wrapped Ryan Johnson's sequel, The Last Jedi, he also made Catherine Bigelow's Detroit, founded his own company, Upper Room, in order to produce and star in Pacific Rim Uprising, and, by spring, he was headlining a revival of a bruising German tragedy, Witzig and the Old Vic in London. In the continued afterglow of that first franchise defibrillating Star Wars film, he continued to notice a stylist he'd hired when he first started doing press cringing at certain clothes I wanted to go for. The hairdresser, who had no experience of working with hair like his, still had the guts to pretend, and he decided that he could no longer grin and bear it like a grateful competition winner. During the press of The Force Awakens, I went along with it, he notes, and obviously at the time I was very genuinely happy to be a part of it, but my dad always tells me one thing, don't overpay with respect. You can pay respect, but sometimes you'll be overpaying and selling yourself short. With the Lucasfilm branded elephant in the room acknowledged, it is even harder to ignore. This is Boyega's first substantial interview since finishing the franchise, his first since last year's The Rise of Skywalker tied a highly contentious, hurried ribbon on the 43-year-old space saga. How does he reflect on his environment and the way the newest trilogy was concluded? It's so difficult to maneuver, he says, exhaling deeply, visibly calibrating the level of professional diplomacy to display. You get yourself involved in projects and you're not necessarily going to like everything. But what I would like to say to Disney is do not bring out a black character, market them to be much more important in the franchise than they are, and then have them pushed aside. It's so difficult to maneuver, he says, exhaling deeply, visibly calibrating the level of professional diplomacy to display. You get yourself involved in projects, and you're not necessarily going to like everything. But what I would say to Disney is do not bring out a black character, market them to be much more important in the franchise than they are, and then have them push to the side. It's not good. I'll say it straight up. He's talking about himself here, about the character of Finn, the former stormtrooper who wielded a lightsaber in the first film before being somewhat nudged to the periphery. But he is also talking about other people of color in the cast, Naomi Aki, and Kelly Marie Tran, and even Oscar Isaac, a brother from Guatemala, who he feels suffered the same treatment. He is acknowledging that some people will say he's crazy or making it up, but the recorded character hierarchy of The Last Jedi was particularly hard to take. Like, you guys knew what to do with Daisy Ridley. You knew what to do with Adam Driver. You knew what to do with these other people, but when it came to Kelly Marie Tran, when it came to John Boyega, you know fuck all. So what do you want me to say? What they want you to say is, I enjoyed being a part of it, it was a great experience, nah nah nah. I'll take that deal when it's a great experience. 
they gave all the nuance to Adam Driver, all the nuance to Daisy Ridley. Let's be honest. Daisy knows this. Adam knows this. Everybody knows. I'm not exposing anything. He is on a breathless roll now, breaking his long corporate omerta to touch on the unthinking systemic mistreatment of black characters in blockbusters. They're always scared, they're always freaking sweating. And what he sees as the relative salvage job that returnee director J.J. Abrams performed on The Rise of Skywalker, everyone needs to leave my boy alone, he wasn't even supposed to come back and try to save your shit. Even though he also acknowledges that it was an amazing opportunity and a stepping stone that has precipitated so much good in his life and career, he is palpably exhilarated to be finally saying all this. But to dismiss these words as merely professional bitterness or paranoia is to miss the point. His primary motivation is to show the frustrations and difficulties of trying to operate within what can feel like a permanently rigged system. He is trying, really to let you know what it feels like to have a boyhood dream ruptured by the toxic realities of the world. Other directors agreed, and in 2014 he found himself brought into the Star Wars fold by J.J. Abrams. Cue his reveal as a conflicted stormtrooper once known as FN2187, an absurd attempted boycott, the fourth highest grossing film of all time, and laterally, the millions that enabled Boyega to surprise his parents with their own brand new house three years ago. Yet, again, this is another instance when Boyega seems keen to revise the public record on how something really played out, whereas previously he responded to the fragrantly racist commentary that greeted his casting in The Force Awakens with bullishness, get used to it. As his since-deleted Instagram response post had it, now he is keen to discuss the lasting psychic wounds that an ordeal like that leaves. I'm the only cast member who had their own unique experience of that franchise based on their race, he says, holding my gaze. Let's just leave it like that. It makes you angry with a process like that. It makes you much more militant. It changes you. Because you realize, I got given this opportunity, but I'm in an industry that wasn't even ready for me. Nobody else in the cast had people saying they were going to boycott the movie because they were in it. Nobody else had the uproar and death threats sent to their Instagram DMs and social media saying, black this and black that and you shouldn't be a stormtrooper. Nobody else had that experience, but yet people are surprised that I'm this way. That's my frustration. All right, so I'm going to stop here and I want to cut in and say that, you know, I, I know that there's tons of racism that goes on in the world, but to see it come from within and to see what they did with this character, I mean, we all knew it. We all saw it. It's not like we're stupid. Uh, these are things that I've been saying all the time. These are things that we I always talk about on Rule of Two with Mark. And Mark has even said that he thinks that Finn was the most interesting character. I mean, a rogue stormtrooper, a stormtrooper that turns into a good guy and becomes a Jedi, becomes a Force user, becomes Force-sensitive. That's such a unique story that we haven't seen before. And for them to clickbait the shit out of John Boyega, out of Finn, with the Force Awakens trailer, with him holding the lightsaber, him doing that for maybe two seconds, getting his ass kicked by Kylo Ren, and then his entire character was just reduced to... Ray! That was it. I mean, he's an actor... He's paid to read lines and act a character. And those were the lines that he was given. So what's his fault? There is no fault. The fault is with the directors or the writers who wrote that. And obviously he is tight with J.J. Abrams and keeps saying, <laughs> I liked how he said, don't blame my boy. He wasn't even supposed to come in and save your shit. Because he knows how messed up it was and how they completely, pardon my French, fucked the franchise. It's true. You did. You guys ruined it. And now you got to pick up all the pieces and you got to hire John Favreau and you got to put Dave Filoni where he should have been from the very beginning. And now you got... <laughs> oh, God. I got so much pent-up frustration with this stuff because I got my own stories about things behind the scenes. Uh, nothing like this, you know, but I mean, it's just, just, just shady shit like this. It's just so weird. It's so weird, especially from a company where you think everything is so all-inclusive and this and that. It's like, why would you use his character? And you look at that that poster, which was a, a big Twitter thing, um, the North American one versus the Chinese one. And you see the complete difference. And John Boyega shared it. And he's like, why am I this tiny little character in the poster, whereas in the North American one, I'm, I'm a proper size, according to my role. What is this? And and you clickbait the crap out of me with the lightsaber and the poster. It's like, just just to be pushed aside at the very end. 
this has got me pretty riled up. I want to know what you guys think in the comments. Please go read the full interview down below. Um, this is the kind of bullshit that needs to stop. Don't clickbait characters just based on color to be all inclusive and this and that. And then push them aside once you get your revenue. And uh, reduce them to... Ray! That's it. Like... There's a lot more you guys can read. It's a very great interview about his whole life and all his experiences with everything. So I'm going to link it down below. I'll catch you guys next time.